Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Snowbeck and today we are going to start Unit 3. So we are going to cover Unit 3, Lesson 1. Congratulations on finishing Units 1 and 2. Very exciting. Um, we're going to start by classifying triangles today and one of the things you need to know how to do is to name a triangle. And so you can see this triangle here in our picture has three corners, three vertices, A, B, and C. So I would call this triangle ABC. And you just use a little triangle symbol and the three capital letters. You want to make sure you're using capital letters because the vertices have capital letters by them. Now the sides of this triangle are segments. And so one side, we could call this side, side AB or segment AB. This side over here, side BC, is segment BC. And the third side is segment AC. You could switch that around and call it segment CA, but most, most of the time mathematicians will put the letters alphabetically. To name the angles, you're going to use the angle symbol, and there's three angles. And rather than using three letters, in this case, if I just say angle A, it's very clear which angle I'm talking about. And so I don't need to use three letters. I could call that angle BAC, but I don't need to. So we have three corners. We have angle A, we have angle B, and we have angle C. Will you please pause the video and try to remember what types of angles these are? You're going to classify them by their angle measures. So pause the video, see if you can fill in any of this chart. All right, so the first uh, triangle is an acute triangle. And the special note is all angles are less than 90 degrees. I use the less than symbol. You can write out the word if you want. The second type of triangle, if we're classifying by its angles, we technically should put these in here to show that all three angles are the same size. And this is a word you maybe don't know yet. This is equiangular. Equiangular triangle. And a special note is all angles are congruent. Or in other words, all angles are the same size. The third type of triangle that you see here is an obtuse triangle. And this angle up here is obtuse. And so to be an obtuse triangle, you just need one angle greater than 90 degrees. One angle greater than 90 degrees. And then finally, the last triangle is a right triangle. And it has one 90 degree angle. Could it have two? The answer is no. Um, if you try to make two 90 degree angles, there's no way that those two sides could, could uh, lean in and make a triangle. They would go straight up and be parallel to each other. So you can only have one right angle in a right triangle. So something really cool about triangles is the sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle is always 180 degrees. Every single triangle, the three corners add up to 180 degrees. So let's take a look at this triangle. How would I name this triangle? Well, this is triangle ABC. The three corners are A, B, and C. How would I classify this triangle? How would I classify it? I see one angle that's greater than 90, so this is an obtuse triangle. And then finally, if I had to solve for x, what I could do, since I know the sum of the angles in every triangle is 180, is I could do 180, take away 100, take away 25, and see how much I have left. And I believe there are 55 degrees left, so x would be 55. The triangle angle sum corollary says that the acute angles of a right triangle are complementary. Think about if the sum of the angles is 180, and then you have a right angle. 180 take away 90 leaves 90. And so between angle A and angle B, those two angles together have to be 
90 degrees, so they have to be complementary. So if the measure of angle C is 90 degrees, then the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B also equals 90 degrees. At this point, please pause the video and try numbers 1 through 6. Good, hopefully you tried numbers 1 through 6. Let's take a minute and go through the answers. Number 1, what type of angle is triangle DGK? Well, here's D, G, K. So we're talking about that triangle there outlined in red. Um, I notice this 90 degree corner up here. So that would be a right triangle. Number two, what type of triangle is triangle G, K, F? So G, K, F is the blue triangle. Now, one thing I notice is up at the top, this is 65 degrees. This corner down on the bottom left has to be less than 90 because the whole corner is 90, but we're kind of cutting into it. So our part of the blue triangle is less than 90. Same thing over here. I think all three corners are less than 90. This is an acute triangle. Number three, find the measure of angle DGK. If I trace that D to G to K, I'm looking for this angle. Remember, the sum of the angles in every triangle is 180. And so if I use uh, this, this green triangle, I could do 180 minus 90 minus 40, and I would have 50 left for the measure of angle DGK. So 50 degrees. Number four. Find the measure of angle EKF. If I trace it, EKF is this angle up here. Now what I'm noticing is these three angles, they're on a straight line. They should be supplementary. So if I take 180 minus the 65 minus the 40, whatever I have left, which I believe is 75, should be the measure over here, 75 degrees. Number five, find the measure of angle KGF. So if I trace KGF, KGF is this angle down here. Now, I see the 90 degree uh, mark in the corner. I'll put yellow by it right here. So these two angles together should be 90. So if I do 90, take away the 50, there's 40 left for this part right in here. So 40 degrees is our answer. And last but not least, find the measure of angle KFG. So I'm going to outline this in blue. KFG is right over here. Now look at, I'll outline the whole triangle in blue. So look at this blue triangle. One corner is 65, one is 40, so if I take 180 minus the 65 minus the 40, there's 75 left. So this corner down here must be 75 so that that blue triangle has a sum of 180 degrees in its three corners. Again, pause the video and try numbers 7, 8, and 9. So looking at the triangle on the right, those three angles together should add up to 180. So if I do 180 minus 85 minus 40, then I should be able to determine the measure of angle 1, which in this case, the measure of angle 1 is 55 degrees. I like to fill them in on my picture because then um, you know something about angles 1 and 2. Well, they're vertical angles. They have to be the same size. So angle two is also 55 degrees. And then finally, for angle three, you can use this triangle over on the right, the blue triangle. And you can think about, well, what's 180 minus the 55 and the other 55? I believe you have 70 left for this corner down here so that the blue triangle adds up to 180 as well. The exterior angle theorem. 
The measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of the two remote interior angles. In other words, angle A plus angle B added together should be the same size as angle 1. So another thing that we'll know is angle C plus angle 1, which by the way, I feel like this instead of angle C, I feel like it should have been angle BCA plus angle 1. Those two added together should be 180 because they're a linear pair. This is a, for, um, a theorem that a lot of people forget when they take the quiz, so try to keep this one in mind. Here's an example. Find the value of x, then find the measure of angle S and B. All right, so I notice I have a 50 degree angle, an x, and those are the interior angles that do not touch this exterior angle out here. These are called the two remote interior angles. And if added together, they should equal the exterior. So the x plus the 50, if I add them together, should equal the 2x minus 15. All right, do the algebra. 50 equals x minus 15. Add your 15, and you wind up with 65 equals x. Then we also have to find the measure of angle S and B. So S and B is right here, this angle. Um, if I know x is 65, probably the quickest thing to do is take that 65 and plug it in right there. This angle would be 65. And then all I would have to do is 180 minus the 65 minus the 50. If I take out those other two uh, angles that are in this blue triangle, then I should be able to find the measure of angle S and B. And so when I subtract those, funny thing, is I also get 65. So the measure of that angle is also 65 degrees. Moving on, let's now talk about classifying triangles by their sides. Um, will you do this for me? On this first triangle, put double tick mark, double tick mark, single tick mark. On the next one, put three single tick marks. And on the third one, put a single, a double, and a triple. Then pause the video and see if you can remember what types of triangles these are based on their sides. So the first one has two sides that are congruent. That is called an isosceles triangle. And the special note is two sides are congruent or equal. The second one is called equilateral triangle equilateral. So equilateral triangles will also be equiangular. So that's kind of interesting. But all sides are congruent. And then the third type, the type with three different sides, is called a scalene triangle. Scalene means all three sides are different. So no sides are congruent. Please pause the video and try to answer these two questions. When you're done, unpause. If M is the midpoint of segment JL, what type of triangle is triangle JKL? If I trace JKL, we're looking for what type of triangle is that big triangle. Since M is the middle of JL, this is also 0.75 which means this whole side is 1.5. So if we look at the three triangles, uh, or the three sides of the blue triangle, we have 0.75, we have 1.3, and we have 1.5. They are all different, so that will be a scalene triangle. What type of triangle is triangle JMK? So JMK is this red triangle. Notice the sides are 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and 0.75. They're all the same, so that is an equilateral triangle. For this next one, we will want to draw a picture. It says, if triangle ABC is isosceles with segment AB congruent to segment AC, 
Will you guys try to draw that? What would that look like? I think it would look something like this, where segment AB and segment AC are the same size. Now, it says if the measure of segment AB is 3x plus, minus 4, so I'm going to put that over here, and the measure of segment uh, AC is 4x minus 9, we're supposed to find x and AB and AC. So since this is an isosceles triangle and those two sides are congruent to each other, we can say 3x minus 4 will equal 4x minus 9, set them equal to each other, and solve. It looks to me like x is 5. Once you know x is 5, you have to go back and find segment AB, the length of segment AB. So take your 5 and plug it in right over here. So that's going to be 3 times 5 minus 4, which is going to be 11. And then also plug it in right here, 4 times 5 minus 9, haha, -ha, also 11. And that makes sense that segment AB and segment AC would be the same. Are you ready for some fun? This one's fun. Find the measures of the sides of triangle gen and classify the triangle by its sides. So they're giving us three points and we have to try to figure out, is this an isosceles triangle, a scalene triangle, an equilateral triangle? So we have to know the lengths of the three sides of the triangle. So we're gonna start by finding the length from J to E. Now remember, we're gonna have to use the distance formula. It's that big square root x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So distance formula, we wanna find the distance from j to e. So we make a big square root, and I'm gonna do x2 minus x1, so one minus four squared, plus negative three minus five squared. I'm getting my numbers from j and e. Then I simplify, one minus four is negative three, and negative three minus five is negative eight. When you square a negative, it will become a positive. So this is going to become positive 9, positive 64. That is root 73. So the square root of 73 is not a nice number, but if I type it in my calculator, it's about 8.5. All right, well, you now pause the video, and I want you to do the next two. Do segment EN and segment NJ. Find their, their lengths or their distances. And when you're done, unpause the video. So if you tried EN, kind of cool, we also get root 73, which is approximately 8.5. So at this point, I know it's not going to be scalene. There's at least two sides that are the same. So now I have to do my last one. So if you haven't done it yet, go ahead and pause the video and do segment NJ, find that distance. And so for the distance from N to J, I got root 36, which is six. So if I'm looking at the three lengths, two of them are the same, that will be an isosceles triangle, two sides congruent. So that's it for Unit 3, uh, Lesson 1. Go ahead and try the practice 3.1 and then submit it to me when you're done on Schoology. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day.